Hey guys, and thank you for taking the time to check out this uh, video series that I am going to try and quickly whip up to help new users of FlashForge 3D printers um, how to use their proprietary slicing software, which is FlashPrint. FlashPrint is a it's a reasonably well featured program, maybe not as full full of featured as others out there, but you'll find it does the job uh, pretty well for the most part. Um, so it's a good it's a good starting point for most people. Uh, the version that I'm going to be using um, in this video is not the latest. It's uh, 5.3.1 64-bit for Windows from memory. Um, uh, look, so if you're on a on a on a Mac or maybe even a Chromebook, you might you might find that some of the controls may vary as we go through things. Um, so as I said, this is a, a video series designed for new users. I'm going to try and keep it short. I'm going to try and keep it nice and sweet. It's not going to be going in depth into too many things, except maybe supports because it's handy to know. Uh, but that will be in a later video, so we're not going to worry about this too much now. Um, probably a few things about me just quickly is I am not an IT professional. Uh, the video is not endorsed or supported by FlashForge. I'm not getting paid uh, financially or physically in any which way for making this. It is purely to try and help new users who join up on uh, the Facebook group and generally have the same sort of questions as everyone else that's new to the hobby. Um, also, not using professional recording equipment, so if my audio is not the greatest, my apologies is all I can give you. I am very sorry. Um, so the technology that we are using is uh, called one of two things. It's either FDM, which is Fused Deposition Modeling, or FFF, Fused Filament Fabrication. So we're not doing, this is not, nothing to do with resin printing at all. It is dropping down hot plastic, not liquid resin. Uh, one other thing, just quickly, if at any stage you feel like you'd like more information, um, about any of the features that flash print do have there are other videos out there that maybe with another program will go more in depth into into certain certain features so uh, you know without wasting any more time let's try and get this first video out of the way and nice and quickly um, so look first thing what is a slicer so if you're new to this you might do what I did when I started 3d printing go and download a nice STL file um, Stick it on your on your memory card and chuck it into your printer and then wonder why it's not working. Seriously, I did that and then I had to Google <laughs> I had to Google how to actually yeah print an item. So a slicer in my definition, a slicer converts a 3D model into a set of instructions telling the printer how to recreate it layer by layer, which is exactly what we're doing. The printer is going to be laying down hot melted plastic in tiny little layers to build up that item piece by piece so that's that's what it does how do we do it is um you know this is how the video is going to the videos are going to tell us how we can actually make it happen um so quickly our first sections are just going to be touching on printer selection nozzle selection mode selection if applicable to your machine it isn't applicable to every single one uh, and also just basic machine controls so we're not going to go into any advanced features which do exist on on the program uh, i am going to show you one semi-advanced feature which is image to 3d and why it may be good or bad for you so first section printer selection is down in our left hand corner here not the part where it says 20 degrees and cloudy and all that stuff down here little print head icon uh, and next to it we've got some words for me, it is a Guider 2 S series printer, which is the machine I am currently using. Um, and you know, this will it'll change the print bed size and everything when you actually select your printer, and I'll show you. Um, the next bit is 0 0.4 nozzle size I'm using and normal print mode. Clicking on the icon will give us the option to change pretty much all of that. So in here, you can select your printer. At the moment, they're all greyed out for some reason. I literally have no idea where it does that sometimes um, but you can you know select your printer in question when you when you're running a fresh um, a fresh flash print instance it'll be all black um, the next section is 
nozzle size, which should be fairly self-explanatory. Um, different printers support different nozzles, not all of them will have different options, so the Guider 2S can go from a 0.3 to a 0.8. 0.3 being very fine details at the cost of efficiency, so print times will be longer, depending, well, it just will be realistically, not depending on anything, it's just, it can't push out as much. Um, and 0.8 will be a much faster print, but it won't have the same level of detail. We're going to leave it at 0.4. Now, if this wasn't greyed out on one of the creator series of, of printers, and I think some of the, I think the Dreamers are dual dual printing as well so they're called idex or independent extruder so they've got the ability to print you know from two print heads uh, mode would be not grayed out it'd be black and you'd be able to select um, modes that are relevant to those particular printers so there will be a video that i will be going into that further in depth but not now the next section in this first video is connecting to the machines because well that's important isn't it we you know if your machine's got wi-fi or you have physically connected it to your computer with a supplied cable you can send um you can send the the ready-made file direct to the printer without transferring it to a memory card or a usb stick um, which you know just saves a bit of back and forth you've got buttons on this right hand control panel here down the bottom the two of them multi-machine control and connect machine and the tools drop down box also has um, the same uh, the same do, 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 what am I trying to say the same uh, basic uh, con uh, basic functions basic yeah, basic controls apart from the connect machine thing so first thing is connect machine sitting here is my printer which is occupied I have no idea why it's not doing anything and that's automatically found because it's connected to my Wi-Fi network. You can also manually enter the uh, details of the printer in here, which uh, the IP address on a Wi-Fi printer can be found on the uh, on the status screen. So if you go to settings, there'll generally be a status, a status button there and you just enter that info. Uh, make sure you also get the port number, very handy. And then you can hit connect machine or if you've done it that way, just connect all. This will allow you to connect multiple, which is pretty cool. So if you've got multi printers, eh, do it all in one hit. And this will bring up our multi-machine control, which will give me the name of my printer. This is, I've changed this, and I'll show you that in a moment. My IP address, this is the nozzle temperature, bed temperature, and the status. Um, I would love for FlashForge to actually, um, you know, put some information up here so it tells us what this information is, rather than uh, trial and error for the most part. So, yeah, fingers crossed on that one. Uh, checkbox which is generally grayed out here so when you're going to send G code you can you know select the different printers that you want to send it to so say if you're doing one one file to multi you can check multi and, and hit it I believe the information screen will also bring up some info for the printer so we can see some of the files that I've previously printed a button for the lights a camera button which this printer does have a camera to turn it on or off and when it's on a snapshot button as well getting out of that tools has a little bit more up here control panel is a little bit more in depth where you can apply things like you can yeah you, know, you can preheat the printer from the comfort of your of your office chair or you can you know move things around you can turn the cooling fan off or on etc you can turn the lights on or off as well which I think they're on yep they're on um, yeah it doesn't actually tell you what the status is which is not that useful uh, but look I personally have not really used that at all so again this is not in depth this is just various information on where you can find it onboard preferences this is where you can change the name of your printer it's also telling me that apparently it's not on its latest firmware which is strange um, so, you know, you can rename your printer, whatever in there, hit OK, and it'll save it. And machine information is just going to tell you about the um, about the currently connected machine that we're using. So, you know, type, uh, name, firmware version, serial number, and also, which is pretty handy, the sizes. So if you're not 100% sure what your build size is, um, you can go in there and look at that. 
So getting rid, getting rid of the Easter Island head, I will now show you the last bit of information for this video, which is the image to 3D, and you can sort of decide whether it's you know useful for you or if you'll go with a different method. I I do use a different method, but I just found out about this, so I'm going to show it quickly as part of this video. Select an image. These are JPEG, JPEG, um, black and white, which is you know because I I convert my stuff into a uh, effector graphics, so black and white is all I need. Um, you you don't really need colors for this, and you'll see why in a moment. So, you know, just pick your image. <laughs> Hitting open, we can change the shape of it. Plane, sphere, tube, canister, lamp, seal, etc. Um, I'm going to stick with plane. You know, look, I'm hoping if you're watching this, you're going to have a fiddle around, and I, I would expect you to. Definitely play with it. This might suit you absolutely perfectly. Um, your next thing, these two are probably, you know, the two settings that you're going to need to fiddle with. Darker is thicker, lighter is thicker. So the black stuff, we want to protrude. And the light stuff, the white part, is just going to be, we don't care about. It might be different for you. You might want the white sections or the light sections to stick out further. So in which case, change it. Um, and I also found out that if you have like um, different gradients of even grey or colour, it'll actually adjust the thickness variably when you actually load it. So, you know, darker parts will be thicker, lighter parts will be... Um, yeah, anyway, you, you probably, it probably makes sense anyway, but I, I'll just mention it. Uh, yeah, so, you know, set your settings, hit OK, and boom, we've got a plane. This is a reasonably, you know, detailed image because, you know, we've got lots of curves and all the rest of it, and we've got an Adobe stock watermark in it, which doesn't get in the way of... Um, me using it as an SVG, but I'm not using it for commercial usage, so just, you know, don't, uh, I'm, I'm not breaching any, any copyrights or anything, I'm just fiddling around with it for my own personal use, and this is just an example. Um, and let's face it, you know, at least with this image, I, I wouldn't be trying to print it, the details are not exactly what I wanted to, it's pretty, it's pretty meh, to be perfectly honest. So, all it is, all it is, I'm just using it as an example in this, in this particular video so that's that and I'm gonna get rid of that uh, so thanks for watching this is the first video um, the next video that I'm going to do is going to be on model manipulation and some of the controls for that and it'll hopefully be a little bit shorter I'm also then going to be doing a video which should be on supports probably just supports because that subject takes longer than you want it to um, fourth video should be IDEX printing, so for those of you with a Creator or Dreamer series printing, this will help you with, you know, things like, um, you know, printing multiples of the same objects from both print heads simultaneously, uh, dual colour printing, etc. Uh, and the fifth video will start to get into slicer settings, and it might end up being more than one video at that point. So, again, thank you for watching, and I hope you'll stay with me for the uh, for the next couple of videos and it, like if you have any uh, questions feel free to either direct it to me in the comment section or you know if you haven't already please join up with the uh, flash forge support um, the flash forge support group on Facebook because there is a bunch of really awesome people on there who can provide a whole heap more information if needed so thanks for watching and I'll catch you next